What is up, everybody? We are back here at King Film Sports for the NFL Week 2 reaction and analysis. And then I will be getting to my power rankings after we recap all of the games and the betting locks from this past week here. And as per usual, I will be giving out my NFL Week 3 betting locks and game predictions tomorrow, Tuesday, around noon. So stay tuned for that one. But here we will recap all the games. So first, we get to the Thursday night game. Bills at the Dolphins here. I had the Bills winning this one, although I thought it was going to be really close. I thought this Bills team uh, had some holes on their defense and offensive line, and I still do maintain that. But boy, this was a horrible performance from this Dolphins team here. Tua was just disgustingly bad, and then he ends up getting a brutal injury, another concussion on a nationally televised game. Tough look for the NFL there and for the Dolphins going forward, as that was a devastating loss. Uh, James Cook was really good, but this game was really just over uh, in the third quarter when Tua went out, uh, and the Dolphins end up losing this one by a lot. And our under 50 and a half ends up getting pretty lucky there, as Tua was screwing the under with all of his mistakes, especially that pick six was just atrocious in the third quarter. But after he went out, the Bills really just stopped trying um, because they were up by so much. And then the Dolphins with Skylar Thompson were not good in their own right there. So the under ends up cashing pretty easily there. I think it ended up being 31 to 10 or 34 to 10. Uh, so a little bit of breathing room there as well as even the closing numbers ended up coming through there. But big win for the Bills. Next, we had a big upset of the Raiders over the Ravens here. I ended up getting this one wrong. No betting lock on this game, but it was just shocking uh, that the Ravens ended up losing this game. I knew they had a couple more holes in that Chiefs game than we saw. Um, it was a bit of patchwork there late in the game with that comeback. Uh, and we saw that their offensive line in this run running game just isn't doing what it needs to do this is a classic game that the Ravens in previous years would have just been able to salt away in the fourth quarter with 10 point lead uh, but they just couldn't run the ball consistently against this Raiders team and we even saw the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh last week able to do that um, and ultimately it ends up costing them as the passing game with Lamar Jackson not sustainable enough there and Ravens defense also without McDonald their defensive coordinator from last year now in the Seahawks is really struggling as well Minshew leads the Raiders to the comeback and the win there just a shocking result as the Ravens were about nine point favorites in that one RIP to everyone in their survivor pools who had Baltimore there as the Raiders get a huge upset win across the country then we get to a betting lock here that we lost Panthers says plus seven here was only able to get like plus five and a half or six uh, because they never fully get to the touchdown. Didn't even matter at all. The Chargers just completely stomped this Carolina team. I mean, the Panthers are really, really bad. This is one of the worst NFL teams at this point that I can even remember seeing. Bryce Young is just an atrocious quarterback right now. I'm not sure if he's going to improve, but he might be out of the league by the end of this year if he keeps this up. I mean, this Panthers offense is just disgusting to watch, to be quite frank. And the Chargers, I mean, I'm not going to take away a lot of credit because they do deserve a lot here. Jim Harbaugh, we obviously know that he's a great head coach, and the Chargers could potentially compete for a wild card spot that dynamic offensive running attack if they can just take up the time of possession advantage like they did today i think they had two to one advantage 40 minutes of time of possession against this panthers team but i'm not sure how much you're able to take away from this game it also was concerning that justin herbert uh, made an ill-advised decision and got hit on a play late in the game when the Chargers had already had it won and then he came up limping. So not great there that he could potentially be injured as they're playing at Pittsburgh this next week, which is going to be a brutal bloodbath for them there. So hopefully he is able to go for them. But yeah, devastating blow for this Panthers team again as they lose at home there. Then next we get to this Colts at Packers game. I knew this pick was square. Uh, you're taking Anthony Richardson on the road, laying a field goal uh, in Green Bay. Desperate spot for Green Bay after a tough loss to the Eagles and they lose their quarterback. But I just thought Malik Willis was so bad that there was no way that the Packers could win. Well, the thing was Malik Willis really didn't have to be good. And the stats are a bit deceiving here. I know he had a pretty good completion percentage, but he was just dumping the ball down every time. It was really just Josh Jacobs in that ground game that was just churning up yards against this Colts team. I think Josh Jacobs had five yards of carry, uh, over 150 yards on the ground, and Malik Willis can run himself as well. Then you combine that with the Packers defense actually playing well. Uh, I thought this Packers defense was one of the worst in the league, but I guess Richardson and that Colts offense is worse than I thought there. So Packers really just controlled all of that game. Game ended up being 16 to 10. It wasn't even that close. I mean, the Packers just completely outplayed the Colts in every facet of this game there. So I'll eat my loss there. That was just a bad pick. Then you got to the Browns and the Jags. This was one of my better selections. Browns plus the four. Line came down to plus three, but even if you took it at that, Browns win outright here as this Jags team, I mean, just so frustrating. Uh, I bet for all these Jacksonville fans, um, Lawrence was, again, really bad here 
and had a really big fumble in this game. Also didn't help that it was raining, but Lawrence, for some reason, has never played well in the inclement weather. Not good if you're in a Florida team with this tropical weather there. Browns, I'm not going to say Deshaun Watson played well, but in the first half, he definitely bounced back. Stefanski definitely had a good game plan for him, but ultimately the Browns defense just carried the day there. Really ugly, sloppy game, but the Browns were able to get the victory. Then another bad pick by me, Niners at the Vikings. Definitely just should have laid off this spread, not forced it with the Niners minus the six points, but I was just looking at a sell high spot on Sam Darnold after what he did in New York, but boy, was he very good against this Niners defense that we thought was good. There was also some situational things at play. Niners get a big win after all the offseason drama. They're on a short week going to Minnesota. Haven't won in Minnesota since 1992. Guess they're just cursed there for some reason. And Brian Flores against the Shanahan scheme always seems to have success there, which is pretty interesting. And another one of these games, it was 23-21, but really was not that close. Um, there were some big turnovers in this game. Sam Darnold, Forced one in the middle, picked off by Fred Warner. Warner also had a big punch out when the Vikings were threatening to go up by 20 on the goal line there. Um, but Purdy also a couple huge mistakes. One where he just lost the ball and it goes into a defender's hands, an unforced fumble there, and then also a pretty bad pick, which put the Vikings in the red zone. And then also one where the Niners had the ball in the two-yard line, fourth and goal, went for it, ended up missing, and then next played Sam Darnold to Justin Jefferson for 97 yards. Epitomized the game there. Really wasn't as close as the score indicated. Just a couple huge plays uh, that ended up going Minnesota's way there. So I'll eat my loss. Vikings went outright. Looked very impressive there. Then we get to the Steelers at the Broncos, and this one, Steelers minus two and a half. From what I saw with Bo Nix in week one, I mean, he is just atrocious at this point. This Broncos offense can do nothing, especially against the Steelers defense. It was always going to be pretty brutal for him there, so Broncos only put up six points there. Justin Fields and the Steelers offense was pretty ugly all day as well, but just took an early lead and were able to ride that to a victory there, but very ugly game in Denver. And then the game of the day one of the games of the season probably it will end up being the Bengals at the Chiefs. Ended up putting an extra half unit on that. So we had a unit and a half on the Bengals, plus six, six and a half, even was able to get a seven at game time there, which was clutch. And the Bengals, I mean, you can say for sure, they know how to play this Kansas City team. They're not intimidated by the environment in Kansas City here. Um, was just gonna, always going to be a very close game. A couple huge plays just went in the Chiefs' favor in this game. Not many people are talking about that Burrow uh, strip sack fumble that ended up being a touchdown for the Chiefs. I thought Burrow was down there, but apparently not. Apparently he was rolling on a Chiefs player. I would have liked to see a few more replays of that before it ended up getting confirmed because uh, that was just a huge play where the Bengals had a five-point lead and the ball and then just gave it up. Obviously, everyone's going to talk about later in the game when the Chiefs on a fourth and 16 get the P.I. call. I thought it was a bang-bang play. I don't think it should have been called, especially because the rest were so bad the entire game. I don't think it's right that they're able to come in there and make that call at that point in the game, but he was there a little early, so that is something. And then Butker nails the kick from 50 yards out. I think an underrated part of this game, though, was the Bengals on the drive before. They have the ball with the two-point lead, and Burrow ends up taking a sack. Uh, he was getting harassed all day from that offensive line, um, so the Chiefs end up winning this game by one. Uh, I thought this was a really big game for the Bengals to end up winning, uh, especially with that loss. Week one to the Patriots now find themselves 0-2, down two games in the division of the Steelers, so if they played like they did today, I think they will definitely make the playoffs, but just a tough situation now being 0-2, losing once again to the Chiefs, a game that they played really well. It's very tough there, and then the Chiefs' perspective, I mean... They do not look perfect by any stretch, do not look like a Herculean team, a perfect team, but getting these victories, they just know how to play these close games. Uh, saw it in week one against the Ravens and now against the Bengals as well. Um, so not saying they look unbeatable there, but definitely really good and get to 2-0. Then in the uh, Sunday night game, I took a live bet half unit, Bears plus 11, and I just thought Caleb Williams was going to look better than this. He really looks bad. It's the exact same thing we saw from them in week one being the Bears. Offense just really struggles there with Caleb Williams. The defense really just carried the day there, was able to only make it a six-point margin, so we ended up winning that. But at this point here, we will get to the week two power rankings here, and as I stressed in the last video, this is just a neutral field favorability point spread, Vegas point spread between all these teams here. So obviously I'm going to have the number one team favored on a neutral field against all these other teams and so on. And I know it's going to be quite controversial maybe uh, to the uninitiated, but I still do have the Niners as my number one team here. And this is, is because I thought it was a tough spot against the Vikings and a situ lot of situational advantages for this Minnesota team. Very good home field advantage there and a couple big plays went against this Niners team. So I overall just think that the talent composite of this Niners team is very good with Shanahan. And I don't think you can take away a lot 
uh, from that one big loss, not downgrading them too much there. And it's also a factor of what are the other teams that are going to take this number one spot. You see number two, I'll get into the Chiefs, but it's not like the Chiefs looked invincible in that game against the Bengals. I only have a half point separating these two teams, um, but I just think that at this point on a neutral field, the Niners would be favored against this Chiefs team. Uh, the Chiefs, their offense, I mean, they're really riding this power running scheme with Pacheco, and then we saw Carson Steele, although he did fumble as well. Uh, Rasheed Rice really carrying them in the receiving game, and then Xavier Worthy wasn't as involved in this game as he was in the Ravens game. But Kelsey, you can see signs of him getting older, but he is able to make some plays in big spots. But that left tackle, I mean, he is going to be a liability for them this season because he was just getting eaten up by Trey Hendrickson on the outside. So that's definitely something to attack. And then Burrow always plays pretty well against Kansas City there. Their defense was able to get off the field in some key situations, and their defensive line was good. Um, but I think their secondary can get attacked. Remember, they lost LeJarrius Sneed to the Titans this offseason season so definitely see a few holes with this Chiefs team but still very good we get to the number three spot where we've got the Buffalo Bills and there is a pretty big drop off between the Chiefs and the Bills I must mention here but Bills did look pretty good there I already had them in the number three spot last week and upgraded them a half point here in my power rating because they were pretty impressive always with Josh Allen the offense is going to be good and then the defense forced to end some mistakes so I like what I saw from them there then at number four and this might be a bit controversial to some but I have the Bengals Jumping up to number four, I then I'm at number eight last week. Um, really relies on what I saw a lot in preseason and then uh, what I saw in that game against Kansas City. Thought they definitely should have won that game in a tough environment in Kansas City. A lot of situational mistakes there held them back. But I definitely think with Jamar Chase uh, playing for that contract and T. Higgins potentially coming back, this offense is going to be very dynamic. Uh, I like their offensive line in the ground game as well like Kasiki and Hudson, some of the weapons there. And I think their defense always plays very hard there. So I think that they are due for some bounce back here in the season. Definitely don't think that 0-2 record is indicative of their talent there. But it's also worth mentioning, I have, I think, the fourth through the six teams here in my power ranking, all relatively the same. I just gave the nod to the Bengals there. And now we get to those five and six spots. I have the Ravens getting bumped down to the five spot. Now they were number two uh, or number three going into this week but that Raiders loss really took them down a lot all of the problems that we saw in that week one Chiefs game all came back and it was just really embarrassing to come against that Las Vegas team there their defense clearly is not the same as it was last year and Lamar Jackson just not able to carry them as I mentioned in that Kansas City game the 16 carries for 120 yards or whatever it was is not sustainable over the course of the season Derrick Henry looking very old as well Justice Hill just not good enough in the ground game their offensive line uh, against that Raiders D line and then their defense as well so lots of regression there for this Ravens team down to the number five spot I'm keeping the Texans at number six just wasn't very impressed with what I saw against the Chicago team not going to downgrade them uh, because I was slightly impressed with their defense now it is Caleb Williams rookie in his second start there uh, but they were able to clamp up the ground game uh, but CJ Stroud just not able to do much against that Bears defense, not able to convert many touchdowns uh, to blow that game wide open like they should have at home in prime time. So just going to keep them at that number six spot there, but good win against Chicago. Then we get to the seven through 10 spots, all going to be NFC teams here. And these teams all played each other uh, this last week. And I'm going to have the losers of those games being ranked above, uh, but nine and 10 did go up a lot this last week to get into this uh, power ranking here having the Lions drop from the number four to the number seven spot is big here as Goff just really bad when he was pressured in this game slightly concerning about this Lions defense here Stafford was able to card them up and we saw what the Rams looked like this past week Lions gonna drop there the Cowboys as well I think they were number five last week now I'm down to number eight as their defense just got shredded there uh, maybe the Saints provide a blueprint for how this Cowboys defense can be attacked and then Prescott just a couple mistakes as he's prone to do and very bad performance there from Dallas, but can't overreact too much there. At number nine, I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, we saw this last season with Baker Mayfield, a resurgence, and I do think that Todd Bowles is a great defensive coordinator. He's their head coach. I think he calls a great defense, great scheme, um, was able to get up big in that commander's game week one, and then really stifled this Detroit Lions offense, who has one of the best offensive lines in the league, great perimeter talent, uh, was really able to trick Jared Goff into some big mistakes there. So love what I see from Tampa. And I have these two teams tied here, Tampa and the Saints. I know the Saints have probably looked slightly better this season, but I'm keeping them at number 10 here, just being slightly conservative to avoid some recency bias. But yeah, really like what I see from this New Orleans team so far. Derek Carr, this is some of the best stuff I've seen from him in years. Uh, maybe back to that 2016 season with the Raiders, 
because Kubiak with the play calling is playing into all of his strengths here. And you see that they have a pretty good roster. Uh, their offensive line is decent. You've got Kamara now healthy. And then you've got some great perimeter talent as well. And Olave and a couple others there. And then their defense, Dennis Allen, is widely criticized as being a bad head coach. But he calls a pretty good defense, as we've seen here really been able to stifle the Panthers and the Cowboys so far this season. So I'm interested to see how these teams, the Bucks and the Saints, are able to move going forward because they do have an impressive 2-0 slate uh, behind them so far. So we will see. As always, be sure to like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of my power rankings and analysis of some of the games in the comments down below. And I will see you all in the next one.